kind of rough right now too, but. Um. Hey, hi Brandon, <laughs> well, welcome to the Ms. Montreal. Yeah, thanks, I'm really glad to be here. We're gonna sound really sultry today. <laughs> this is the place to ask questions. This is the place to take notes. This is the place to learn strategy. Welcome to the Visible Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Lewis, and this is the podcast you'll love listening to week after week. After a history in Hollywood, I know what it takes to get visible. And as an entrepreneur, you don't have to keep feeling frustrated and trapped, not able to get yourself out there. Myself, my guests, and even my family are here to lift you up, guide you, and give you powerful ideas so that you can get your unique voice into the online space. Ready? Let's do it. And action. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Visible Entrepreneur. I am here with a friend that I've actually had for like two years in the online space. Someone I met online, someone I collaborated with, and someone I really, really admire. So welcome to the show, Miranda Navius. Wow, I felt like it needed that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I feel like I just like <laughs> scored a goal or something. Yeah, I feel like you're like coming into the boxing ring. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. When you said it, it's been two years, you're 100% right, but I can't believe that it's been that long. <laughs> and I can't believe how much things have changed and grown. It's like, we're told like our businesses and who we are are totally different. Really cool to see. We're both in really different spots, but like really good spots. Yeah. Really good spots. So, um, people aren't as familiar with you as I am. So for the <laughs> listeners who are hearing you for the first time, why don't you give them a little bit of background on who you are, what you do, what you're passionate about? Sure. So I uh, like to call myself a systematic marketing expert, and I really like to work with female online service providers, uh, especially coaches. And uh, I provide done for you marketing services mostly. So that's going to be stuff from social media to sales funnels to graphic design and websites. And I love anything marketing related. So I kind of like it when people throw projects at me and I just kind of take it and run with it. Um, uh, I also have uh, another side of my business that's focused more on teaching students, and that's geared towards uh, female online service providers in their first one to two years of businesses. And I uh, like to talk about how to get clients and how to systemize everything and manage, you know, their their client focused businesses. Love it. So it, that makes me think of a conversation I was having with someone the other day and they're like, yeah, I'm feeling really overwhelmed with all my clients and all the systems and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, have you heard of Dubsado? And they're like, what? So there's a lot of, person, right? there's a lot of people out there who, and you don't have to talk about Dubsado if you don't want to, but they have this pie in the sky dream of being a one-on-one -on -one coach or service provider in some way. And then they start getting to the logistics of the scheduling and the payments and automating the processes and they're like no right because most of our coaches or service providers are more that like um compassionate people driven personality not necessarily as technical as you and i are so give them just a quick snapshot of like how you figured out your own systems and what process you help people go through yeah i definitely agree with you that a lot of the clients that i work with they're really type be. They're very like idea people. Mm -hmm. They have amazing ideas, amazing personalities. But when it comes to implementing that tech, they just a little bit hit a wall. Like, and, yeah. <laughs> no, don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> so I love coming in there and being like saving the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. doing the systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. Um, and I think that Dubsado is great because it's like this one and done software that they created that really helps you go from like A to Z with client management. It has everything all in one place. Um, I don't use it personally, but I've mm -hmm. used it before with clients and mm -hmm. I think that it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, and anything that helps do systems is like a thing that I like. So <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So in terms of what you're really excited about right now, different things that you've been able to figure out, because I've watched your business grow so much, especially in like the last six months, what have you seen and what realizations have you had to help up your visibility, which is therefore up your clientele, up your revenue in the past couple of months? Yeah. Um, and 
I think I ha really have been focusing more on visibility. And so I'm glad that you say that, that you think my business is more visible because sometimes it's hard to see that on my side, like, am I right. visible? Am I not visible? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I think mostly in, in the past six months, I've really just been focused on being visible. In the beginning stages of my business, I was mostly focused on bringing in the income, getting clients, um, getting my business set up, getting my system set up. And eventually I kind of got to a, a point where I was making a full-time income with my business and it was kind of time to shift gears and really focus on how to scale up. And visibility is such a big important part of scaling up. So I kind of have been really trying to focus on that. So I've been applying for podcast interviews. I did a couple summits recently and I feel like getting my name out there has helped, um, with getting more clients too. I was like, Oh, right. Okay. Clients, <laughs> more clients as well. But it's also really grown my student audience and that's been so fun to really focus on lately because I love teaching. Um, and it's, a totally different different atmosphere when I'm teaching with like the passive income side of my business versus helping clients. I love both so much like equally, but mm -hmm. um, the visibility has has really helped me grow the passive income side as well. Well, and for those of you that don't know, Miranda was actually my guinea pig when I was creating the Hollywood printer personality quiz. I called her and I'm like, you are the production designer. Like, can I please chat with you and get some answers to this? So if you got that result, this is the lady that inspired that. And what I love is that you hit on some of those strategies that we're talking about with the results of the quiz, which is focusing in your zone of genius and teaching. So I love that you've been going for podcasts and for summits. I don't know if writing is your jam but have you been feeling like increased confidence on those platforms? Like feeling like, yes, like this is the place I'm meant to be to get my name out there. Yeah. Uh, writing is kind of my jam. I love writing and I have already done so many guest posts mm -hmm. that I did kind of feel like I wanted to branch out and do more things like podcasts Absolutely. and summits. And as an introvert, which I think a lot of production designers are introverts. Yes. Yeah, um, percent, <laughs> probably 99%. <laughs> um, it, it has been difficult in a process for me to get to a point where I do feel comfortable being on camera, being, um, you know, having my voice recorded and played back to me mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, and applying for all these things as well, like reaching out and um, pitching people and stuff like that. So yes, I, I think that it has really been a, a process and in focusing on the things that bring me a little bit out of my comfort zone I've been enjoying that. I've like been pushing myself a little bit and I feel mm -hmm. like that's done a lot to kind of bring me over the edge in terms of visibility. Like guest posts were great. Mm -hmm. but I'm seeing a lot more traction with like being on camera and I'm discovering that, you know, maybe the podcast and the video thing, like I am actually doing okay with that. And so um, it's nice to kind of discover like these different sides of myself and, and see how it's all um, bringing it together with, you know, my marketing. Well, and I think a platform that's really brilliantly utilizing this strategy is Masterclass, where you can learn from Gordon Ramsay or, you know, I don't know if it's Steven Spielberg or Ron Howard or whoever it was, but all these different experts in these industries. All of them are production designer personalities, people. I know you're like, no, Gordon Ramsay, he's out there and he's crazy. It's like, that's his public persona. He's a very technical person. And that's why he's screaming at people because they're not doing it exactly how he <laughs> wants. So, I think this is a beautiful thing where you can see that even if you're not necessarily the director or the actor personality type and way out there, you can still be just as successful coming on to teach. This is what yes. so many people are attracted to and specifically why I think podcasting is such a brilliant strategy for you because people are on a podcast to either one, be motivated or two, to learn pretty much it, right? Unless yeah. you're listening to like me, I sometimes I listen to Sounds of the Trail, which is about people that are hiking just because I'm like trees, I'm in LA. Oh yes, <laughs> here, I hear a squirrel, you know? <laughs> so it depends, but yeah, I absolutely love that for you. So congrats. I think that's fantastic. So let's move a little bit into client acquisition. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> it can be very terrifying for people who are wanting to become one-on-one -on -one coaches or service providers. So tell me a little bit about that and how you really niche down into your client attraction strategy. 
So client acquisition, like even you just saying it, I like got excited because yeah, like- I just love talking about it. I'm like, yes, I like, <laughs> yeah. zone of genius. Let's talk about it. Um, Beautiful. I, I kind of fell into it. And I, when I first started my business, I found getting clients to be really easy. And I didn't realize that that was weird until other people started asking me how are you getting so many clients? It's really hard. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is so easy. (laughs) And so that's when I kind of started to, to realize like, maybe I'm, I'm actually skilled in this area that, you know, I didn't even realize that other people had a problem with because I was just in my own head about it. And I was so new in the business world. And once I started realizing I had a skill in that area, I started to really focus on what I was doing. So at first it was so hard because I'm just like, you just do it. Like, I don't know. But then I would, I tried to like analyze myself. Like I would sit there and be like, okay, what is the actual process I go through on a discovery call? Is there like boom, 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 a system I take every time. Um, How do I reach out to people? Um, Am I reaching out to them like the same way at the same time? Um, Like, what am I doing that is actually causing this to happen? And so that was interesting for me. And I found out that there were a lot of things I was doing that were just naturally systemized because I am a type A person. (laughs) Um, And once I was able to really map those out, I realized I could create like a step-by-step formula for somebody to follow who um, maybe isn't naturally good at attracting clients or they're just overwhelmed or don't really know where to start um, and could kind of follow this step-by-step formula from, you know, no clients to getting a client, getting multiple clients. And it's really fun for me to be able to um, analyze all of this because hello, I love spreadsheets and all of that stuff. Um, all the stuff that makes me break out in a cold sweat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm yep. a little nerdy. <laughs> um, and, but teaching that stuff has been so much fun for me because I just really, I've always enjoyed teaching. And now that I've realized kind of my area of expertise bringing those two things together has been so much fun and it feels so good to be able to help people and to show them, um, you know, the step-by-step path that they can follow and, and feel so confident that if they follow these steps, they can do it because it's a formula and all you have to do is do X, Y, and Z and you get the result. So give us a little bit of juiciness. Give us a little step in that formula that you think would be really actionable for people here that are listening, that are feeling really discouraged, really struggling. They've always dreamed about having their own like one-on-one coaching service or service business. And they're just feeling like, well, maybe I should go back to my nine to five because, you know, I'm not seeing any success. Like that kind of discouragement, like what do you think would be something really actionable for them right now? That's so hard to answer. And I do want to give you guys some tidbits, but it's like, there's so many little tips. It's, it's not like a big thing that you're not doing. It's like Mm -hmm. little tweaks that you can make to what you're already doing that will improve your conversion rate on your marketing. So, um, the, the first step is to start out with networking. Um, and I think it's so easy to come at networking from a perspective of like, sell, sell, sell. I want to get in front of these people and just pitch them and pitch them. And instead you need to come at it from the perspective of, I want to build friendships and relationships with as many people as possible, real genuine connections and ask them about their businesses, ask them what you can do to help them. And the more connections that you build and the more real friendships that you make, the more likely they are to recommend you to others, the more likely they are to hire you themselves. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've met somebody like them and then hired them just because I like them. <laughs> yep. Right. <laughs> like it happens. <laughs> all you need to do is like develop that um, that network of people to the point where you're getting consistent referrals and consistent recommendations from people. And um, I mean, that's just kind of one piece of it. There's also like prospecting and on social media as well as cold emailing. Um, and I do have a, a free challenge actually that kind of goes through all of these steps called the five day client challenge. If you guys are interested, oh, where it's really yeah. like, that's my ultimate like step-by-step. Love it. <laughs> um, so I do go into more detail there. Um, but again, it's all about making tweaks and what I really like to rely on um, 
more so than taking advice from other people is like trial and error and just taking note of the different things that you're doing when you're talking to people. So say, for example, you want to try out cold emailing. And I had somebody talk about this with me today. They were wondering like the best way to cold email somebody. And I was like, well, you might, why do you have to decide between a choice A and choice B. Why don't you send A to five people, B to five people, and see how they react? Do you get a better response with A, or do you get a better response with B? And then once you figure out what you have, a, what gets you a better response, then split test it again. How can you tweak it and make that response even better so that your conversion rate mm -hmm. goes up and up and up, mm -hmm. and you are continuously um, getting better and better at making the sale. Beautiful. And I think that's such a good point because what you're really hitting on with what you're saying with networking is word of mouth. Yes. Such a beautiful thing to do. And I think that in order to successfully get to the point of word of mouth, you have to kind of have things together. There's a difference between like getting on a call. If I'm going to call Miranda and being like, Hey, so what's going on in your business? How can I help you? Blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of ease and flow there. Versus, I don't know if you've had this happen to you. You get on a, like a call with somebody just to chat and whatever. And it's like, yeah, just things. And I don't really know. Like, what do you think I should do about this? And how have you gotten this? This and it's a fishing call. So there's a very like distinctive difference. And it's kind of hard to know where those boundaries are with entrepreneurship because you're not in person with someone. But I think that the key that she's trying to say is how important it is for the long haul to start building these relationships. The same is true in Hollywood. Like this is what actors and producers and directors do. You go to different mixers and networking events because ultimately you, that's how you start getting your work. It is built on relationships and our industry is the same way. And there tends to be this misconception that because it's all online, like that person's so amazing and they never want to talk to me or, oh my gosh, they're do this. They teach the same thing I do. So I can't associate with them because I need to be the only one. So what are some things that you would say to those kinds of fears? Yeah, I think that that is such a good point. And what, I would say about that is when you go into like building relationships and networking, I think the most important thing to focus on is giving, give as much as you possibly can to everybody. Um, offer them work for free. Even sometimes, like I hate to say it because I know it has like a horrible, uh, reputation. Like people don't like to talk about that, but it can be a great way to get experience. If you don't have experience yet, it can be a great mm -hmm. way to practice even just practicing your actually working with clients um, for free or for a discounted rate can be so incredibly valuable that it's worth more than money because the more experience you have and the more practice you have and the more testimonials you have, the better you're going to be at getting clients in the future. So I'm all for that, just like hustling and doing whatever you can to get the most experience and um, the best relationships with people, as long as you're coming at it from a really genuine giving focus perspective of you just want to help people and that is really going to pay off in the end like it's all going to come back to you um i truly believe and that and that's what i did in my own business so I can attest to the fact that, you know, I was successful in that. So <laughs> I love that you're saying that because there's this misconception I've been seeing online. I don't know if you've been seeing it, but it's like, raise your prices, raise oh. your charge, what you're worth. And it's like, I know that everyone out there is raising their prices by like a grand and then no one is buying. So I love that you're talking about that. I mean, in the beginning, when I first started my courses, I'd have, you know, 10 to 15 beta testers knowing that only seven or eight would complete the course. And then I started it like half price or 80% off or whatever, charging basically nothing just because I wanted that feedback and I wanted to build that trust in those relationships. So this is such a beautiful point that you're bringing up. I don't think people talk about enough because they get into the space with people who are already very successful that are saying raise your prices so they make that mistake out of the gate. Um, I so much agree with you and I'm so glad to hear that you say this because I feel like it's so polarizing in business. Uh, so, you know, some people, or it seems like sometimes most of the people are just all about raise your prices, raise your prices, charge your worth or whatever, double your prices. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't believe in any of it. Honestly, I kind of think it's crap. Mm -hmm. Um, eventually you will get to the point in your business where you can maybe double your prices, but yeah, you need to earn your stripes first. You can't mm -hmm. just, you know, jump into the business world, create a website and then raise your prices to a hundred dollars an hour. Like that's just not going to work. You need to 
gain that experience first before you um, get to the point where you can raise your prices. So, it would be like someone walking into like a feature film Marvel movie audition and being like, I know that I'm an unknown, but I deserve $20 million. Let's do this, <laughs> right? It like, yeah. it sounds silly, but it's kind of in the same way of what people are doing. So yes, earn your stripes. And plus you're going to learn so much, so much along the way and really figure out what your zone is and what you should be specializing is. Cause I can guarantee you when you start in this business, and even if you've been doing this for a year or a year and a half, things are going to change. Look at Miranda and I, we're like totally different people now. And it's because we went through this journey and we assisted people as much as we could to figure out who am I really and who can I serve the most? I think that's also such a great point and something I strongly believe in is really diversifying your skills, especially in the beginning, as much as possible. Take jobs that, you know, you barely even know what you're doing. Like just apply for everything and just try to gain experience in every single possible field that you can think of online so that you can really narrow down what you like and what you don't like, who you like working with, who you don't like working with. The more feedback and information that you have about yourself and about your clients and everything, the better of an educated decision you are going to make. I see people all the time coming into the online business world right out of the gate with like such a clear brand and a clear identity and a clear, like, this is what I'm doing. And and I'm just like, okay, TikTok, it's going to be a year from now and you're going to change your mind completely. Like you change don't it. have to have it all <laughs> figured out. Um, change is just what happens. You have to embrace that right away and don't think that you can skip steps by trying to be perfect right out of the gate because it's just going to backfire. You're going to have to build a whole new business anyway. Like <laughs> nobody knows what they're going to be a couple years from now in their business, change happens and you can't prepare for it. You just need to embrace it. And yeah. <laughs> I read a quote yesterday and it said that disappointments are inevitable, but discouragement is a choice. Oh, I love that. Isn't that beautiful? And I think that it's so true in this case, because I don't know about you, but especially in the beginning, I would feel like if something, a launch failed or, you know, a client experience didn't go like I wanted it to, I really beat myself up. And I think it's because so many entrepreneurs before they become entrepreneurs have had like 10 different jobs, like 10 different lives. So they'd see it as just another failure. And I think that that's why so many people's businesses just go belly up is because the discouragement really, really gets to them. So I think it's what Miranda is saying. And what I'm also saying is that I can guarantee you are going to fail while you're launching, while you're building your list, while you're working with clients, it's going to happen. But if you can keep the heart and keep that end goal in mind of who ultimately you can help change, changing their lives, serving them at a higher level or whatever, just keep getting up, keep trying because it's going to be very discouraging at some point and you're going to have to really be strong in your mental game to keep going. But that differentiates the people who actually make that sustainable income for the long haul. Yes. Failure is going to happen for sure. And have you heard of, um, gosh, I forget who it is that runs this program. And I think it may be for like freelance writers, but it's something where she encourages it, encourages you to go out and get 100 no's. Like, yeah, I've heard of this and get like, no, after no, after no, the whole point is to fail. And yeah. it's because failure leads to success. Like mm -hmm. the, and, and you just have to learn from it. Just take a lesson from every failure and don't look at it. Like it's a bad thing. It's a learning mm -hmm. experience. You're going to fail mm -hmm. and it's totally mm -hmm. fine. My first product launch, I sold one product <laughs> of yep. the launch and worked on that for 90 days, probably so many hours sold one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mine was this. So yeah, mine was a big fat goose egg. So yeah. I hear ya. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. And it's like, you know, if you're, if you're an actor, you have to get such thick skin. I mean, that's what I used to do. I'm and you're, you're told, right you're told everything. You're too fat. You're too ugly. You're too blonde. You're too whatever. And you know, after a while you start to just tune it out. And I'm really glad that I had all of that happen to me because then this wasn't as disheartening. It was like, Oh yeah, whatever. It's just another day at the office, you know, <laughs> but it's true. You do have to develop that thicker skin, not meaning that you're going to deal with a ton of rejection in this business. You may not, but it is going to be a lot of trial and error. So I love that you hit on that. 
I think that um, you're right. You may not have to deal with a ton of rejection. And I don't even think I have dealt with a ton of rejection in my business. It's almost more like you're harder on yourself than other people are going to be on you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just me, but I think a lot of other people out there feel the same way. And it's, it's, so it's maybe not having to have a thick skin because other people are consistently putting you down because I don't find that I get like haters or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I don't have a ton of people that say mean things to me. I'm the one saying mean things to me. I'm the Mm -hmm. one saying you didn't do this. You didn't do that. You're not, this wasn't good. Your launch didn't succeed. Like nobody else cares how my launch did. Like yeah, yeah. me saying you only got one. Just my mom. My mom cares, but that's it. (laughs) (laughs) So it's somewhat having to develop a thick skin for yourself almost. And and change that mindset a little bit to where you're not constantly being negative towards yourself. And I think what you're hitting on is high expectations and expectations are some of the most damaging things that you can do, but it's something that we were all raised with. We were all raised with, you do your best and then you do harder and you go harder and you, if you get the A, you go for the A plus and all of that. So you go into this world with these very high expectations of success and you see other people succeeding and you're comparing yourself. And so you want certain numbers for launches. And that's why I stopped. Like, I don't look at list growth. I don't look at social media growth. I don't look at necessarily financial growth unless I have to print out my profit loss statement because for me I naturally have high expectation and I know that that will be more damaging for me other people really motivated by all that stuff me no so look at whatever place in your life you are holding those high expectations and just staple this to your forehead I always give my best and my best is good enough and then let it go let's go yes that is such good advice well, I think this has been super fun. I hope that you guys have felt more encouraged. I know this has turned into like mindset, clients, all <laughs> kinds of fun stuff, but that's because Miranda and I have grown so much over the past year and we wanted to bring some of that into your court so you would feel the camaraderie and the cheerleading of us saying that you can yeah, do it. But Miranda, why don't you wrap this up, give someone that last piece of parting advice and let them know where they can take that challenge. I think you said it was a challenge, right? I think yeah, that's a perfect challenge. freebie to offer. Um, yeah, I just launched it. It's called the five day client challenge. It's just five day client.com. And so if you're having any trouble getting clients, this is going to be, you know, it's supposed to be like get your first or next client in five days or less. So if you don't have a client and you want one, you can have one in the next five days. <laughs> <Woo-hoo-hoo>! <laughs> um, and I guess my last parting piece of advice would be to just, uh, take action in your business, regardless of fear, regardless of what your brain's telling you, just keep consistently taking action over and over again, learn from your failures, improve over time, and just keep going. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here, my darling. And thank you everyone for listening. I hope you really enjoyed this episode of The Visible Entrepreneur. Be sure to subscribe, whether you're listening on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, every place that this thing is, including YouTube. We're so happy and privileged to have you be a part of this tribe. In the meantime, go out there, celebrate your successes, and we will see you on the next episode. If you're already on my list and you love the emails you get from me and you're wondering how does she email all of these things and keep everything organized and build her list, the answer is ConvertKit. That's the email responder that I have chosen after using a bunch because it makes it the easiest to build your list. I'm a big fan of bringing someone in and giving them an onboarding sequence that's educational and gives a ton of value and ConvertKit makes that so, so easy. So if you're interested in signing up under me, you can go to bit.ly forward slash Michelle convert kits and get your 30 day free trial to try this software. And of course I don't leave you alone. You can email me your receipt at hello at visibilityvixens.com when you sign up using my link and I will give you access to the private group where you can see tutorials and ask me any questions you have along the way. So I will see you on the inside of convert kit. Be sure to join at bit.ly forward slash Michelle ConvertKit. I hope you loved this episode as much as I did. Now we're all about building a tribe here at The Visible Entrepreneur, so be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and then head on over to the Facebook group. It's a great place where you can practice your video, live stream, and really enjoy the community that we have built. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next episode. Now get out there and get more visible. That's a wrap.